Curtis. It's mine by right of discovery. No other human eye shall see it and live. Today, all San Juan is asking, where will the flying death strike next? Who will be the victim? What is back of all these mysterious and fantastic murders? Only one inquest that you won't broadcast, Mr. Thorpe. Your own. Montezuma. Now you protect it for Professor Andrew Forbes. As I have found it five years ago, it's mine by right of discovery. So as a human eye shall see it and live. You want it, don't you? You're proud of your plumage, aren't you? Kill for it, don't you? I shall kill again, many times. 
foolish people of San Juan think I'm only a poor, eccentric archaeologist. They don't know how rich I am, or how smart. If they were to see you now, they would think you were some monstrous leftover from the prehistoric age. They wouldn't believe that you were Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god. open, so I just walked in. Well, why not? After all, you're Andrew Forbes' daughter. Welcome is my own. You mean if you had one? I've always said that no good ornithologist should ever marry. One can't chase birds and women at the same time, you know. <laughs> well, just sit down, Mary. Uh, would you like to see my article on, on birds of the Southwest? Our copy came today. I, I just finished reading it. Oh, I see you didn't like it very much. Oh, yes, it was very interesting, only... Only what, Mary? Well, I'm afraid Father will be furious about you mentioning that legend of Montezuma's treasure being buried around Azteca. You know how archaeologists hate treasure hunters. <laughs> but I'm not a treasure hunter, Mary. Some of your readers might be. Oh, so that's why you're calling upon me. Partly. I wanted to have a talk with you about Father. What's Andrew been doing now? Making sheep's eyes at some young widow? Father isn't interested in women since Mother died. Oh, oh forgive me. I'm sorry. Mother's death was strange. Horrible. I wonder if the tragedy hasn't affected him. I think your dad's been working too hard lately. And you have noticed the change. Well, frankly, yes. He's here for days at a time. Doesn't try to explain when he comes back. Just says he's on the verge of some great discovery. Dr. Lambert, I wish there had never been any such thing as Aztec Indians. Father does nothing but think, dream, and talk Aztecs. You can't just think and talk about the same subject and stay sane. I'm afraid for him. Have you tried getting him away from here for a while? Oh, when I suggested, he simply blows up. That great discovery your father's on the verge of couldn't be Montezuma's treasure, could it? No, I'm afraid you don't know father as well as I do. Finding Montezuma's treasure wouldn't mean nearly as much to him as digging up the key to some old Aztecan picture writings. He's a scientist. All scientists. Finding an Aztecan Rosita stone would be a great contribution to science. Lambert, I want to talk to you. Hello, Father. When did you get back? What is this foolishness? You mean my article about birds, Andrew? Birds? What do I care about you and your silly birds? Why did you have to write this tummy rot about Montezuma's treasure? Oh, you're upsetting yourself over nothing, Andrew. I merely mentioned the legend to give my bird story a little color. Color? You know what it'll do? Bring a lot of fool treasure hunters out here. Between their digging and their dynamite, they'll blast that stecker off the map, looking for something which never existed. I'm sorry, Andrew. Sorry, a lot of good that'll do. Father, you talk as though Dr. Lambert committed murder. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. And in future, you stick to your own trade, chasing feathers. Doctor, I'm ashamed of my father's actions. Please try to overlook them. I understand, Mary. Don't worry. Any apologies from Mary are not from me. See why I'm so worried about him. His nerves are completely shot. Isn't there something we can do to help him? Well, he might snap out of it if we could divert his mind into another channel. Yes, but how? I don't know. It's going to be very difficult. If we could only get him interested in something else. Pretty, isn't it? Yes. I've never seen a feather like this before. Beautiful bird. Not a bird, it's a creature. Where did you find this, Mary? Well, on the floor. Why, is it something special? Special? I'll say it's special. Why, there are only three known specimens like this in the entire world. Two are in museums in Mexico City, and the third is in Don Gonzalez's private collection in Honduras. Then it must be valuable. Oh, it would bring a high price at any museum. But it's not the money I'm interested in, Mary. As a scientist, I'm interested in the creature itself. There's just a chance that one may have survived down through the ages and is about here somewhere. If it is, I must find it. Doctor, you keep saying creature. You mean bird, don't you? The scientific theory is that the thing was half bird and half reptile, lived on blood. 
how can they tell that from just a feather? With certain scientific facts to substantiate it. Each of the other three feathers was found clutched in the hand of a dead man, whose throat had been torn open, jugular vein severed. Sounds like a vampire tale. If there are such things as human vampires, they wouldn't have feathers. And a vampire bat doesn't have feathers either. Certain species of that bird are flesh eaters, have a taste for blood. Hey, maybe I've got something. The Aztec god Quetzalcoatl was pictured as a feathered serpent. The priest who invented a god like that could have seen some prehistoric monster. Why, Mary, you're real. Come sit down, dear. My mother. You remember, don't you, doctor? Yes. Then there is such a creature around here. Well, there could be. No, no, you better rest a little longer, dear. No, I'm all right. I'm worried about father. The thing might kill him, too. I've got to go and warn him before it goes to Azteca. Yes, by all means do. But I don't think he'll take any stock in it. I'll drive you home in my car, Mary. Yes, please, no. I'd rather wait until father cools off before you try to talk to him. All right. But I've got to go to Azteca to talk to Superintendent Hastings. He has brought me unusual feathers before, and it's just possible he may have left this for me while I was out. Perhaps he did. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mary. Family friend. You weren't very nice to him. Well, he wrote stuff that will bring a pack of greedy treasure seekers around here, which will interfere with my work. Well, he didn't mean to offend you. He just thought perhaps there's some sort of prehistoric creature out there where you're working. Well, what makes him think so? Well, I, I know you'll think it foolish, but I found a very peculiar-looking feather this afternoon. You found a feather. What kind of feather? What did it look like? It looks like it might come from some rare bird. Only the doctor said it didn't. Where is it? Well, Dr. Lambert has it. I found it on the floor of his study, and he thought perhaps Mr. Hastings left it for him when he was out. He thinks it might be from some prehistoric creature, a sort of flying monster that somehow managed to survive. <laughs> the doctor better take a vacation. He'll be getting a nervous breakdown. Then you will tell him you're sorry? If it will make you any happier, I'll stop by and apologize right now. Oh, he isn't there now. He rushed right out to a stacker to show the feather to Mr. Hastings. Oh, you'd better not wait supper for me, dear. I may be late. Goodbye. <laughs>
sorry, Doc, but you shouldn't have been so curious. pioneer in radio entertainment, Radio Network XOR is undertaking to bring to its listeners first-hand information of a factual mystery thriller. Press and radio during the last 24 hours have given much space and time to accounts of the strange and mysterious death of Dr. John Lambert, one of America's foremost ornithologists, whose body was discovered last Thursday night near the Azteca National Monument, a few miles from the little city of San Juan, New Mexico. Richard Thorpe, who has written many of the mystery yarns recently broadcast by XOR here in New York, has been engaged by this network to fly out to New Mexico to solve the strangest of crimes. He will broadcast daily as he progresses toward the murder solution. Mr. Thorpe, who is here in the studio, will give you an idea of his plans. I now present Richard Thorpe. Ladies and gentlemen of our listening audience, good evening. Today, when I was talking casually with Mr. Hanson, New York news editor of XOR, our conversation naturally drifted to the subject uppermost in the minds of all mystery fans. Who or what killed Dr. John Lambert and drained the blood from his body? Was this bizarre act done for the purpose of baffling the authorities? Was the crime committed by some mad mortician who was acquainted with the use of embalming instruments? Or was Lambert a victim of some strange prehistoric bird or animal? Stranger still, do vampire monsters exist today? Many of the legends of human vampires existing in the dark corners of the earth, the werewolf of the Russian steppes and the Carpathian mountains of Transylvania, also the were-tigers of the Burmese jungle and the cat people of the Near East. Explorers tell us of strange people with strange tribal rites. Devil worship has existed today not only in remote jungles, but actually live in European cultural spots. Oh, but Father, I wanted to hear what Dick Thorpe had to say about Dr. Lambert's death. I've read lots of his mystery stories and... First thing you know, you'll be believing in werewolves and devil worshippers. Then you were listening. I couldn't help overhearing some of it. Then you heard him say he's coming here to find out who killed the doctor. <laughs> It'll take more than a mystery writer to uncover that. But, Father, he's very clever. All he needs to solve a case is just one tiny clue. And maybe we can furnish him with that clue. Maybe we could. Good night, dear. Sure and tune in day after tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for Richard Thorpe's initial broadcast from San Juan, New Mexico. Good night. I'm staking the reputation of XOR on how this thing turns out. And I don't mind saying I'm uneasy about it. And don't forget I'm doing a little staking myself. What about my reputation? Are you going to work alone on the case, Mr. Thorpe? No, uh, Louis Havana, an ornithologist, has volunteered to help. And then there's another fellow, a friend of mine, Vance Bennett. <laughs> Clue, Mr. Thorpe. Come in. I'm looking for Sheriff Hayes. I'm Bill Hayes. My name is Dick Thorpe. Oh, yes, I heard you yesterday on the radio. And, uh, this is Jerry Jones, my radio broadcast technician. Just call me Jones, the Sheriff. Hey, what is that? A hand or a steel trap? It depends on the occasion. Professor Louis Havana, an ornithologist. Glad to know you, Sheriff. Thanks. We just flew in from New York on the Lambert case. Yes, I heard that, too, on the radio. Are you going to solve the murder today, or are you going to take a couple of days? Well, Sheriff, I'd say that depends on you a good deal. Nice of you to let me plug along in my humble way. I thought maybe you might be going to clean up the case before I could get started. Hey, Sheriff, haven't you heard him on the radio solving those mysteries? Yeah, knows who the criminal is beforehand. Yeah. Hey, I hadn't thought about that. His stuff is pretty cleverly done. 
It's amusing for radio listeners, but this isn't the radio. Well, you know, Sheriff, I plan to put it on the radio. If you think I'm going to furnish clues so the killer can Nothing listen to Nothing broadcast that. without your okay, Sheriff. I'll see to that. <laughs> well, so long, sir. Hold on. <laughs> Network XOR now takes you to the little city of San Juan, New Mexico, where Richard Thorpe, famous author of mystery stories, will broadcast the first step in his effort to solve the mystery of who or what killed Dr. John Lambert. At this moment, the inquest is opening. There was only one injury, a wound in the throat, very jagged, almost from ear to ear, more pronounced on the left side, jugular vein completely severed. Death had been immediate. Rigor Morris was just setting in when the body was discovered. From the nature of the wound, could you describe the death instrument? Not exactly. The wound was too jagged to have been inflicted with a tool with a cutting edge. I'd say more of a tear. My guess is, and it's only a guess, it was inflicted with uh, teeth or claws, maybe talons, maybe a beak. And you think Lambert was killed by some or predatory bird? Except for one thing. What's that? The body was practically ready for embalming. All the blood had been drawn out. Your witness. You say the jugular vein was severed. Is it possible, Dr. Wagner, that such an injury itself would drain off the blood? No, that's not possible. I just wanted to establish that fact for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, Sheriff Bill Hayes. Next stand, please. I tell you, boss, this program's going to be a knockout. Nothing like it ever broadcast before. Oh, yeah? I've staked my reputation on it. And your job. And there wasn't any strange footprints or animal tracks near Lambert's body. Want to ask Bill any questions? Just one. And Lambert couldn't have been murdered by a man or an animal. No, I'd say the killer wasn't a man or an animal. Not unless he had wings. That's what I wanted to establish. That the criminal had wings. Thank you. And the old Bill. Next witness, Professor Andrew Forbes. When did you last see Dr. Lambert? That is, I mean, prior to his death. On the afternoon of the day he was killed. Anyone else present? My stepdaughter, Mary. Where did you see him? At his home. What was the nature of your call? I went there to remonstrate with him about something that he'd written in an article. What had he written? Well, he mentioned the legend about Montezuma's treasure being buried somewhere around Azteca. I wanted to warn him. Stuff like that would bring in a crowd of treasure hunters who would interfere with my archaeological work. I mean, the digging and blasting indiscriminately. You parted his friends? Oh, yes. Your witness. Professor Forbes, you've done some archaeological work among the Aztec ruins down in Mexico, haven't you? Yes, for some years. Why? The old Aztecs worshipped some kind of feathered serpent, didn't they? Yes, they had a god which they pictured as being half reptile, half bird. Quetzalcoatl. Purely mythological, of course. Do you think it possible that such a creature might have existed, say, in the age of dinosaurs and like monsters? Well, I'm an archaeologist, not a zoologist. The two sciences are entirely different. Yes, I understand, but I thought that perhaps in the course of your work you might have come across some trace of such creature. Oh, such things never existed, except in mythology. I believe there's a tradition that the Aztecs once lived around here and then moved south. Yes, I've been trying to substantiate that theory through my work at Azteca. If that's all... Uh, just a second, Professor. There's one more question. I hope you'll forgive me for touching upon a somewhat delicate and tender subject. Your wife. Didn't she come to her death some years ago under somewhat similar circumstances? Yes, that is true. We never discovered exactly how it happened. Then it might be possible that this same, let us say, creature could be responsible for both crimes. Well, I think that's stretching the point. That's all, Professor, and please forgive me. Dr. Lambert was very excited about the possibility of such a creature still existing around here. He said if there is one, he must find it. Where is the feather now? Well, I don't know. Only the doctor said he intended taking it with him when he went to see Superintendent Hastings. Can you describe that feather? Well, it was pretty. Very odd. 
Thank you, Miss Forbes. Dr. Lambert showed me the feather and asked me if I'd left it at his home while he was out. And I told him that I hadn't. So when he left, he took it with him. He seemed to think it was very valuable, wouldn't let it out of his sight. Will you describe the feather, Mr. Hastings? Well, I would say it was just about as Miss Forbes described it. I understand that Quetzalcoatl was not one of the bloodthirsty deities, like the sun god. Is that right? The uh, human sacrifices were made to the sun god. But bloodletting was a rather popular Aztec pastime. And I presume that Quetzalcoatl would kill to preserve the thing he was charged with protecting. Is it true that three such feathers as were described here were discovered in Latin America, clutched in the hands of three dead men? Yes. But there was no feather found in Dr. Lambert's hand. I know that. But a very gentle breeze might have blown it away. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Haven. Jury may now retire and consider a verdict. Pretty good, huh? Uh huh? What happens next? How do I know? This thing's on the square. We, the jury, find that Dr. Lambert came to his death through undetermined circumstances, and that his death was a homicide. Can't be done. I'm sure this is murder. I'm not leaving San Juan until I get to the bottom of these killings. Possibly if we all work together, we might get somewhere. You mean you're willing to work along with me? Young man, you are very necessary to some of my plans. Thank you, sir. I think there was one thing you forgot to ask me when I was on the stand. What's that? Whether you may call it our home. I didn't forget. I just didn't think this was the place. This afternoon for tea? Better make it supper. I have to go to Estica this afternoon. Well, that's fine. I'd like to ride out with you to where Lambert's body was found. I want to have a look around. Oh, uh, yes, of course. It would be a pleasure. Dr. Lambert was found lying on his back about here. There's no blood. Is it possible the ground could have drained it off? Oh, no. We had a chemical analysis made of the soil. Do you remember the direction of the wind? There wasn't much wind that day. This time of the year, what little wind there is, uh, comes from over here. Well, I, uh, I guess I'd better be moving along. I'll pick you up on the way back. Well, thanks for bringing me out here. Well, not at all. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, Mr. Thorpe. Hey, Sheriff. I heard you were out here. I don't want you to get too far ahead of me on this case. Glad to have you. I can use all the help I can get. It's like looking for a needle in... Just a moment, Thorpe. That's the feather I've been looking for. I want Superintendent Hastings here before we disturb that thing. He should be able to identify it. Can you drive a car? Yes, why? I'm staying right here to watch this feather. You drive my car to Aztec and bring Hastings back. But look, Sheriff, hurry.
There it is. Where? There, don't you see the thing? Yeah, but what is it? I'm not sure. I never saw anything like that before. I guess nobody else ever did in Lyft to tell it. Sheriff! 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 Bill! Bill Hayes! Maybe he got tired waiting? No, he wouldn't leave here. Sheriff! Sheriff Hayes! Hey, look! Oh, it's been ripped wide open. Hello. I'd like to speak with Mary, if I may. Who is this? Thorpe. Oh, hello, Thorpe. Too bad about Sheriff Hayes. Yes, you were very lucky. It might have been you. Yeah, I guess I was pretty lucky at that. Mind if I speak with Mary, Mr. Forbes? I'm sorry, she's in the tub. Any message? Well, please tell her I'm starting for the Pine Mountain Broadcasting Station now. I want to have another look around for that feather before I start the broadcast. I'll send Jonesy along to pick her up. Uh-huh. Well, thanks. Bye-bye. Did someone want me on the phone? Yes, Thorpe. So why didn't you call me? He left a message. He said he was very sorry, but he couldn't come after you. But he invited me to watch him broadcast. You keep away from Pine Mountain, do you hear? Well, I don't see why. You heard what I said. I tried that yesterday. This time I'm taking no chances. I wonder if it's the same one Dr. Lambert had. Mary will be at the broadcasting station. She ought to know. I've got a hunch we'd better be getting out of here and fast. I shouldn't be here, Dick. Father will be very angry. He told me to stay at home today. I don't think your father likes me. Maybe I'd better have a little talk with him. Oh, no, please. There's no telling what he'll do. He might even prevent us seeing each other. the feather from the meat-eating species of the bird of paradise. Yet it's somewhat different. Well, it looks like the one Dr. Lambert had, but at the time I thought the other one was larger. Well, is it the same kind? Oh, yes. But I don't think it's the same one that Sheriff Hayes was guarding when he was killed. Did that tell you anything? It's from the same creature, but a different feather. That's a clue, all right. Better get set. We're hooked up at XOR. Be right with you. Oh, Dick. Uh, may I come in while you're broadcasting? Well, if you're very quiet, I'll leave the door open a little and you can peek. How's that? Well... Network XOR now takes you to the little New Mexican city of San Juan, nestling in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, where Richard Thorpe, noted author of mystery stories, is attempting the solution of a factual crime more fantastic and thrilling than fiction. From Pine Mountain Broadcasting Station, he will tell you of his progress. Come in, San Juan. This is Richard Thorpe, broadcasting from the Pine Mountain Station at San Juan, New Mexico. Yesterday, you heard the coroner's entrance to the death of Dr. John Lambert, internationally known ornithologist. You heard the jury's findings that Lambert's death was a death of violence, that the killer was some person, bird, or beast as yet unidentified. Only a few hours after the inquest, there was another murder. This time, the victim was Bill Hayes, sheriff of San Juan County. It was only by chance I was not the victim. When I returned with Hastings to act as witness to the findings of the feather, Bill Hayes was dead. His throat gashed, his body drained of blood. The assassin was just leaving the scene. As I had surmised, it was some sort of horrible creature, a leftover from a far distant age. I don't expect many of you who are listening in to believe a word of what I am saying when I describe this flying monster. Were I in your place, I wouldn't believe it. 
The other networks will laugh us off the air. Keep your shirt on. Thorpe wouldn't pull a fake. The head appeared dragon-like. The wings heaven. A long reptilian tail trailing behind it as it flew through the sky. It is my opinion that only three people have seen this monstrous creature and lived. These are Mr. Hastings, myself, and the human fiend who has sufficient control over this monster to use it as his instrument of murder. Of course, you'll want to know how I arrived at this conclusion. The reason I can't reveal the clue I'm working on is obvious. I don't want to put this man on his guard. Within a short time, however, I hope to announce the name of this killer in my broadcast. With me in the studio today is of America's foremost ornithologist. <laughs> Describe to you the feather we picked up this morning at the scene of the tragedy. Ladies and gentlemen of our radio audience, Professor Louis Hatton. Hey, for crying out loud, there's over that stuff in my ship. Are we still on the air? Yeah, I forgot to turn it off. Well, call the police. We've had another murder. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been a murder at the studio. Professor Louis Havener was struck down by the feathered serpent as he stood at the window examining the feather we had just found. We'll be back on the air again tomorrow morning at the same time. You know what this fake is going to cost the XO Warren Network? A franchise. Yes, Mr. Grant. I want you to find out if there's insanity in Thorpe's family. Yes, Mr. Grant. And order a couple of straight jackets. One for you and one for Thorpe. Okay, Mr. Grant. Okay. Make it three straight jackets. I must have been nuts myself when I hired the pair of you. All San Juan is asking, where will the flying death strike next? Who will be the victim? What is back of all these mysterious and fantastic murders? Early today, a double inquest was held over the bodies of Sheriff Hayes and Professor Haven, newest victim of the monster. I see Mr. Hastings is in the crowd. I'd like to ask him a few questions. Mr. Hastings, you were with me the day that Sheriff Hayes was killed. Why, uh, yes. Did you see some kind of flying monster? Well, I certainly did. Will you describe it to our radio audience? Well, it, it looked like a sort of a, a giant reptile with bird's wings that uh, reminds me of one of those Aztec idols. Feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl. I would like to ask Hastings a question. Well, sure, Mr. Forbes, go right ahead. This is a public forum. Hastings, do you mean to say that you believe there's an Aztec god flying around these ruins? Aztec or Hottentot, I came in town today to get permission from the new sheriff to pack me a gun. Everybody in town's getting a gun from it. I hope they don't start shooting every time they see a feather. <laughs> hey, mister, what's that thing you got there? Oh, this? It's a doodle bug. You find treasure with it. Well, that's interesting. Tell us about it. We can leave now, Dad, if you like. I always thought you locate water with doodlebugs. Well, there are water doodlebugs, and there are other kinds, too. This one locates gold. Oh, so you're looking for a gold mine, eh? <laughs> Not exactly a mine, a treasure that's been buried for a long time. You think there's buried treasure around here? I've got an old Aztec map that says there is worth millions. Montezuma's treasure. Maybe we had better leave now, Dad. No, this interests me. Well, uh, how does this particular doodlebug work? You just walk along holding it this way, and... When you get over the gold or any other metal, it shows here on this dial. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe there is buried treasure around here. It might have something to do with all these killings. Oh, Mr. Forbes, this ought to interest you. Come on over and take a look at it. This is Professor Andrew Forbes, an archaeologist. He's been excavating out of Azteca for years. Bennett's the name. Vance Bennett. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Forbes. Well, thank you. If this treasure hunt of yours isn't too private, I might be able to help you along. Well, that's mighty nice of you. If I find what I'm looking for, there'll be plenty for you, too. Well, I'm not interested in treasure from the standpoint of personal gain. I'm only interested in the scientific angle. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Well, folks, looks like this manhunt is going to include a treasure hunt, too. Tune in tomorrow morning, same time, same station. This is Richard Thorpe, returning you to your New York station treasure hunt, huh? Well, you wouldn't believe yesterday there was a murder in the Pine Mountain studio. Maybe this treasure stuff isn't a hoax, either. If they find any treasure, I want to be cut in on it. Get hold of Thorpe long distance and tell him. Well, there it is, Dick. Fine. How'd you find things in Honduras? Meaning the senioritas? Meaning old Don Gonzalez. I had a heck of a time keeping the old boy from flying up here with me. I'm afraid he wouldn't want to let this precious feather out of his sight. That was less trouble than having it back concealed in that package. What's the idea? 
Well, the way I've got it figured, Quetzalcoatl is guided to his feathers by their scent. I didn't want him at our throat before we were ready for him. Then you really believe there is a feathered serpent? Vance, I'm sure of it. I've seen him twice. When he killed Sheriff Hayes and when he killed Heavener. Why? My dear fellow, haven't you guessed? Montezuma's treasure. Montezuma's treasure? Say, are you kidding? No, Vance, I'm confident the killer somehow stumbled on it. And is using Quetzalcoatl to keep others from finding out about it. Sounds fantastic. Any definite suspect? We shook hands with him this morning. Professor Andrew Forbes. Forbes? But he offered to help me look for the... Say, wait a minute. You think that guy's got me all set as his next victim? Right. Well, in that case, I think he should furnish the feather. It would have saved me flying down to Honduras and back. Sure it would. Only that way it would have been his trap. This way it's my trap, and I have to furnish the bait. Now, when Forbes sees you with this feather... <laughs> Spot according to the map, but I don't get any reaction. I've got another place in mind further over toward Azteca. I agree with your map. This is the logical place. Yeah, I guess you're right. We'd better stick around where the map says it is. Hey, look at this. Where did you get that? Picked it up down there. It's pretty, isn't it? Looks like a very rare feather. Maybe it's a good luck piece. You'd better keep it. Yeah, I'll do that. Well, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Bennett. Goodbye, and thanks. All right, come on out, Dick. That's going, kid. Just as you said it, Woody. High tilted to release Kessel Kuwata. Good. Get in there. I'm going to follow him. Look, don't get nervous if you see the thing and try to kill it. Okay. Lucky, my friend. The treasure hunter found the feather you lost. Pick up that feather? Yeah. Whew. Boy, that was a narrow escape. Now, let's get out of here. <laughs> you got any more feathers? No. Oh, okay. Come on. of you and your fool doodle bug, Mr. Bennett. Now we want just one more of your beautiful feathers, Quetzalcoatl. Just one more. There's only one inquest that you won't broadcast, Mr. Thorpe. 
your own. Would you have thought that Andrew Forbes called? Where did you get that? Oh, in your bedroom. You must have dropped it there. Yes, I found it yesterday out at the ruins. I was just phoning Thorpe to tell him about it. I thought you didn't believe in any feathered serpent. I don't, but if it will help that young fellow's broadcast any, I'll uh, give it to him. Father, with you working out there at Azteca and, and staying away for days at a time, well, I'm afraid people are beginning to connect you in some way with these... It's murder. Who gave you those ideas, Thor? No, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. I know other people can think, too. And what have you been thinking? Whatever that creature is, it, it killed my mother. But Mary, how could I have anything to do with that? You know I loved your mother. Why, you don't think... That it killed Dr. Lambert, and Sheriff Hayes, and Mr. Havener? And always, in some way, there's been one of these feathers connected with the killing. But Mary, how could I have anything to do with the killings or with the feathers? I know you've never liked to talk about Mother's death, so I've tried not to mention it. I remember she had one of those feathers, and she told me you'd given it to her. She thought it was pretty. She asked me for it. In a mysterious way, one of these feathers showed up in Dr. Lambert's study. Also, you insulted him for mentioning Montezuma's treasure. That's right, my dear. Get everything off your mind. That's all. Oh, with you staying away for days at a time and, and no explanation. Well, well, I'm sorry, but, but you act as though you're hiding something. Well, I may as well tell you. I am hiding something, but I don't want anyone to know about it until I'm sure I've discovered the key to the Aztec written language. Oh, so that's what it is. If you want me to prove it, I'll take you out there and show you. But you must promise me not to mention it yet. I'm so glad I was mistaken. You know, I've... I've never thought of you as a stepfather. And I've always loved you as my own daughter. Now, get ready, dear. I'm taking you out to see my discovery. Well, that isn't necessary. I believe you. I think you should know all about it, in case anything happens to me. Well, all right. If it'll please you, I'll be ready in a minute. By special arrangement with the Pine Mountain Broadcasting Station of San Juan, New Mexico, this broadcast is being relayed directly to you from the treasure chamber of Montezuma. Did he find the treasure? Shh. The secret of the Aztec Emperor was found last night by your broadcaster, Richard Thorpe. After I tricked the slayer of Dr. Lambert, Sheriff Hayes, Louis Havener, and others into unconsciously revealing its location. At that time, he was attempting another killing. Following this broadcast, I shall swear out a warrant charging this man with wholesale murder. All I want to know is, did he find the treasure? When I undertook to solve these weird slayings, my first problem was, is there a creature half bird, half reptile, a feathered serpent, a living likeness of the Aztec god, Quetzalcoatl? <laughs> At this very moment, the feathered serpent crouches before me on an ancient Aztec altar, behind a protective cage of steel. The man who directed this bloodthirsty serpent against the throats of others took no chance with his own jugular vein. You heard his cry then. Possibly it wants to be off in search of another victim. Perhaps you'd like to know how the human murderer inspired his instrument of murder to seek out his victim and destroy him. All I want to know is, did he or didn't Thor find the treasure? I can tell you how it was done, but I'm baffled as to how the murderer learned it could be done. In some way, he found out the monster is extremely proud of its beautiful feathers. It will kill anyone who happens to possess one of them. The man's distorted mind was quick to seize upon the simple process of planting one of Quetzalcoatl's feathers on the intended victim. Boy, oh boy, what a broadcast this is. <laughs> It'll knock him dead. Hey, something's gone wrong. This isn't coming through the way it ought to. You better go down and tell the boss he's talking into a dead mice. Why didn't he say something about the treasure? Thorpe's business is solving murders, not hunting treasure. If I could get my hands on his throat, there'd be another murder. I wasn't half through. How long is it going to take to fix that thing? About five minutes if I'm lucky. Well, hurry, will you? I'm doing the best I can.
is something like out of a fairy tale. You must be careful, dear. It's dark in here. Montezuma's treasure. Montezuma's treasure? Beautiful. Hey, hey, somebody in there. In where? In the treasure chamber. Listen. What are all those chests? Gold, diamonds, emeralds. The richest treasure in the world. Why do you keep it hidden? Because it's mine. Mine, you hear? All mine. I'm the richest man in the world. The richest treasure in the world. It's mine. Forbes, he's got Mary in there with him. Showing off his treasure, huh? He's mad. He'll kill her. Keep that thing going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come. I'll show you something else. Dr. Lambert, and all the others. Quetzalcoatl guards the treasure. He's an Aztec god. You mean a monster. And you, you're a murderer. He sent that thing to kill my mother. No, but that's how I learned he would kill to get his feathers back. You see, my dear, when one stumbles too close to my secret, it's dangerous to let him live. I'm sorry it has to be this way. That jar, you breaking off right in the middle of the best broadcast we ever had. And me not knowing what my cut is on that treasure. What's happened? Oh, don't be sore, boss, but I forgot to phone Forbes. You forgot? 
Ladies and gentlemen, the case of the mysterious death of Hembert is closed. As his final victim, the feathered serpent has just claimed his own master, Professor Andrew Forbes. Some broadcast. I'm sorry, dear, it had to turn out like this. It was the only way. Mary, we're never going to think of any of these things again. We're getting away from here. Careful, boss. That mic's alive. Huh? Okay, Jonesy, take it easy. Mary and I don't mind telling the world that from now on, this radio team is going to be Mr. and Mrs. Thorpe. This will run our cause before way up. Up. Up's not the way you're going. What was that for, boss? That was for not phoning Thorpe to cut me in on that treasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.